What up, this is Rama Screen covering movies, TV, and entertainment, and here's my review of In Fabric. Hey, before you watch this review, please subscribe to my channel, press that like button, and ring that bell so you can get notified whenever I post new videos. And if you would like to help support this channel, please do so at patreon.com slash ramascreen. That's patreon.com slash ramascreen. Let's rock this. Okay, honest to God, I had no idea what to expect about this film. I only heard that it's about a dress that literally kills people. And so that crazy concept alone is enough to have me sold. Let me just start by saying, boy, I thought The Lighthouse was the weirdest movie I've seen this year. But nope, because In Fabric comes along and basically says, Hold my beer. Now, I'm not familiar with writer-director Peter Strickland's previous films, so I'm kind of coming in fresh here. In Fabric is a cocktail of all kinds of bizarre imagery, and a lot of it feels experimental. I mean, it's definitely an acquired taste. There's a little bit of David Lynch influence in there. There's a little bit of Dario Argento, and a touch of Lars von Trier's style as well. And it's also kind of great. Grindhouse. I mean, it's just so weird. Marianne Jean Baptiste plays a lonely woman named Sheila who's separated from her husband, and her grown son is dating a gothic woman that she doesn't approve of. Sheila visits a London department store in search of a dress that will help her get in the dating circuit again. She lays eyes on a flattering bright red gown, which turns out carries a malevolent curse. The dress happens to be an unstoppable evil that threatens everyone who comes into its path. Again, as I said earlier, I had not seen Peter Strickland's previous films, which apparently have been described by many as having characters that derive sexual gratification from both sadism and masochism. Well, if that is his style, then the boot fits because... That's pretty much also what you get here with In Fabric. And I'm not kidding when I said that this movie comes off experimental. Between the compilation of random footage from what looks like 80s TV set and a music score that occasionally makes annoying noises, In Fabric is clearly not a movie for everybody because it can really get under your skin. But some of the characters are fascinating though, especially the store clerk lady played by Fatma Mohammed. In fact, the entire store is run by these oddly peculiar folks who look like a cross between witches and vampires. The sexual gratification parts happen a few times and they're pretty brazen, although one can also argue that they are pointless and unnecessary. Unfortunately, the film has a second episode halfway through focusing on a completely different character who also ends up being cursed by the dress, which is a shame because I actually like Sheila's storyline a lot better. Peter Strickland should have just stayed on that instead of making it seem like a series because once the story moves on away from Sheila, that's when In Fabric goes downhill from there. With the exception of a couple of insensitive bank managers, by that point, the film's dark humor is no longer strong enough to keep me interested. And so I find myself looking at my wristwatch every two minutes or so, hoping for the film to end. And I think some viewers out there might overanalyze Peter Strickland's commentary about the chains or the hold that consumerism has on our society. But it all seems such an annoying hassle just to arrive at that conclusion. If only this movie would just be more straightforward and be more aggressive. Like that 2010 film, Rubber, about a literal homicidal car tire. But sadly, that's not the route that In Fabric takes. 